Welcome to a new episode at Economics Design. Today we're going to talk about one of the infrastructures in building Web3. And we're going to go a bit nerdy to talk about what DNS is, Domain Name Service, and Handshake Protocol, which is trying to decentralize domain name service. So we're going to talk a little bit about understanding what they are, how are they important in building Web3 in the infrastructure layer, as well as looking at the tokens and the economics behind how the tokens work. This is a collaboration with some of the community members in Handshake. So I will have some interview clips together with Kibas from the Handshake community. My name is Kiba. I'm a software developer. Um, I also work on like design strategy teams a lot. And yeah, kind of like a DeFi ape and doing like all the random stuff in crypto, NFTs and metaverse. Um, and I got into crypto just through like the 2017 ICO craze. Um, I was, yeah, just working and then had like a paycheck and I was like, what do I do with this paycheck? Dumped it into Chainlink and then like now, a couple months later, I started working at Consensus. Um, and now I'm just kind of like in the crypto space doing whatever. Um, so yeah, and then I, how I got into Handshake was um, I was doing like a freelance job for my friend and she had some Handshake. She's like part of like the kind of like founder group that got a pre-allocation. And so she paid me with some of that Handshake. and so that got me interested in the project and looking into it and whatnot. So Economic Design also owns some HNS tokens because I want to test out the protocol. We bought it with our own funds. Again, this is educational advice. This is purely educational, not investment advice. We're going to cover quite a bit of things today. Introduction to Handshake, the market design of Handshake, how Handshake works, the auction mechanism of Handshake, the supply demand of the Handshake tokens, alternative mechanisms to Handshake, as well as conclusion, some opinions and concluding thoughts. So let's get started with understanding HNS, Handshake Protocol. So before we understand Handshake Protocol, let's understand a little bit more about what DNS is, Domain Name Service. You've probably heard of something like that, you know, go to your computer, type your IP address as 8.8.8 .8 or 0, .0, 0.0.0 and you can get access to different things. Well. That's exactly what DNS is. You know, if you go to Instagram or you go to TikTok, you can find people's usernames. And what DNS is, is basically to attach a username to every individual. And in the computer world, every individual will be a server or a computer or one of these machines. And these machines don't have, they have names, but their names are in ones and zeros. And nobody understands that. Nobody speaks that. So domain name like DNS is basically to give every of these machines a username. And these username can be like ethereum.org. It's, it's one of these website links. So that is what DNS is. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. In blockchain, it's all about decentralizing things. So why do we have to decentralize DNS? I like the fact that my, my Instagram has the, the phone book or the Instagram has the list of everyone to find. And that's good enough. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so DNS is already like fairly decentralized, but there's like different types of decentralization. So I'd say Handshake is coming at the kind of like political decentralization of the DNS system. Um, so DNS is like geographically distributed. Um, there's multiple different ways to actually access domain names. So uh, what Handshake is decentralizing is basically the entire domain name system is controlled by uh, one entity called ICANN um, or also I-A-N-A. I -A -N -A. Um, but Handshake is trying to turn that kind of entity into a protocol. So you don't no longer have to go through these, all these like steps and bureaucracy and um, like applying and like maybe they just don't like you personally, um, or maybe they have like conflicts of interest with like another corporation that they're invested in or what, what have you. Um, Handshake just makes that all a protocol. So it's whatever, credibly neutral um, as to who gets what domain names within the system. So considering that I can just go to one of these like Google domains or something to buy a domain name, how, why should people care if the underlying protocol or the handshake protocol or the DNS is decentralized? Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of security benefits from what handshake does. So um, I'm working on a graphic that kind of explains like all the different ways that you can be attacked within the DNS system as it exists today. Um, but basically like you don't own your domain. Like when you buy that domain from Google, um, there's like seven different parties that are actually touching that domain and like verifying that it's yours and any number of things can happen. Um, so that's one reason why you would want to use Handshake is that you control the domain. It's like, it's your keys, only you can update the records. Um, no one can take it from you. No one can accidentally um, like give your domain to someone else. No one can give false records saying that they're, they're your domain. 
Um, so there's a ton of security benefits from Handshake, as well as um, the identity aspects, kind of as you mentioned before, like you can own your, your domain or your name across multiple different platforms um, at this point. So you can log in with your Handshake domain into Facebook or into Instagram. Um, and now you have this like, unified identity across all the different applications that you use. Awesome. Why should we care about that? Because that's something that is by the internet that is working right now. And we talk about how Handshake is building the infrastructure of Web3. So what is it actually and what is it doing? Good point. So Handshake tokens or DNS, DNS, the domain name, the do domain name service, it's kept in this thing called root servers. So root servers are these big companies that keeps all these domain names, right? Like basically they are the companies that issue these Usernames or these websites. So what what they do? So the websites are like your .com or .tv, .org, .edu, .design, and they keep that. I think there are about eighteen of these root servers all around the world. So it's kind of decentralized, but con considering that the entire internet has to is basically governed by this eighteen big servers, that's not exactly very centralized. And if you look at the map, you see that the root servers are mainly just in the US or mainly in North America. That's really not decentralized. So that's what we want to solve. That's what we want to understand. How can we build the infrastructure of Web3? Because this is still very Web2 focused and we can improve that with the existing technology that we have. Existing technology. What is the existing technology that we're talking about here? Well, we have distributed ledger technology, DLT, blockchain. And what Handshake is doing is basically it takes the Bitcoin infrastructure, which is where you have the miners and validators validating information, and then you can run different kinds of things on top. So that's what Handshake does. Handshake is an application that uses, that decentralizes the domain name service. So instead of .com, you get to have like .lisa or .economics design. And that ownership will be distributed because everyone can own that, number one. And number two, the validators, these servers that you see all around the world, mainly in North America, now you are, these, these servers are basically your validators using the Bitcoin infrastructure. They are your miners and they will help to maintain and upkeep the system. So just in case aliens invade or aliens only invade the US, all the servers in the US falls, the rest of the world can still function as normal. So that's the idea. And this is very important because it builds, it is the base layer infrastructure for Web3. And if you think about it, the internet was created as an open source, free for everyone, free to use infrastructure for everyone who wants to use it. And the fact that you have these root servers in, in the hands of specific people, it's not decentralized at all, that doesn't go well with the idea, the, the main fundamental philosophy of the internet. So that's Handshake. And we want to understand the economics design behind Handshake. And I want to focus a lot more on market design, which is the digital environment where the tokens and participants exist in. From there, we can understand a little bit more about what the Handshake token is for, or how will the Handshake token help to facilitate everything. So there are a total of 2 billion and 40 million Handshake tokens out there. It is distributed or divided into 43.3% free Open source, open source software contributors. So these, these contributors, the 43.3%, it's basically airdropped free money to developers on GitHub. And they have, they need to meet certain criteria, but basically those criteria shows, show that this software developer, this engineer, this person working on open source, free open source software is part of these Web3 infrastructure. So we want to reward them. We want to show appreciation to them. And we do that with airdropping tokens to them. So the people who meet the criteria get to go in and collect free tokens just because you're contributing to, to the entire space. So I think that's good. The other thing is, the other big one, is, which is one third of it, goes to mining rewards. Remember I said that the basic underlying infrastructure is still like Bitcoin? Yeah. So. It means that for any transaction that goes, you need people to be validating. And when the people validate, how are you incentivizing them to validate? You give them rewards. So you give them mining rewards and the rewards 
half every four years, just like Bitcoin. It's really the whole Bitcoin infrastructure, just that they build a different kind of use case than Bitcoin as a payment. So that's how it works. And 33.3% is given out to people in the mining rewards. Then you have 5% to the development contributors. So there are some core developers, if I'm not wrong, that's contributing. Then you have 5% to certificate authorities. So remember we have this big servers around the world. Then you have big internet providers or big people, big websites around the world, like google.com, facebook.com. And they get to keep that, they get in this handshake system, they get to keep their dot Facebook or dot Google or dot Twitter. And so part of 5% of these tokens are set aside to give to these people. So if they are, if they come on board and they say that I want to have a dot Facebook and this is Facebook coming on board saying, saying that I want to have a dot Facebook, then they get to unlock that for free. And they also get to have some, they also get some uh, handshake tokens. So that's the idea. And 3.3% goes to nonprofits and other kind of open source software. So it's really trying to foster and reward and return this value that is being created in, in the handshake protocol to contributors, to developers, to users of the system and trying to make everything open source, trying to make everything distributed and decentralized. I think there's two main reasons. Um, one is that the entire internet is kind of built on open source and like those ideologies and everything like that. So it's kind of like giving back to the people that this project kind of um, is based on at like a fundamental level. Like the internet and what we use today wouldn't exist without free and open source software. Um, and then the other side of it, I think, is also that the more value that you can give away to other people, the more value that you can kind of generate and have people contribute back to your protocol. Um, so the reason why they gave so much 70% of the supply is that if some other protocol comes along and gives more of their supply to the developers um, or to other people, then that protocol is more likely to succeed because now more people have a vested interest in it. Um, so I think that's also another reason why they gave away such a large portion. So how does Handshake work? Firstly, you will have your own mining consensus. So as I mentioned, it's basically just like Bitcoin. It is really a copy paste of Bitcoin's core code with some additions. And it has its own mining consensus. So when in Bitcoin, whenever I send, valid, I send a transaction to someone or someone sends a transaction to me, there's a bunch of people trying to solve the puzzle and confirm that, that transaction. That's called mining. In the same way, you have that kind of system in the handshake protocol, in the handshake network, and these are their own miners and validators, mining, validating, validating the transaction, and they're rewarded. So that's the consensus mechanism. And now for the supply and demand of the token HNS. How do we, how does the system, how does the protocol increase in supply? It is through block rewards. So every 10 minutes, 2000 handshake tokens are being released into the system to the different miners that validated the transaction. And the current inflation rate, the current rate right now is 7.7%. It halves every four years. So that's the, the main way that people, the main active way that it's increasing the supply. The second thing is, remember I told you that 5% of the tokens are kept for certificate authorities. So that's where these are big players. And if they decide to come on board to Web3, they're incentivized to do that because they get to receive the handshake tokens for free. So it's one of the ways to also pull and drag people from Web2 to join Web3. Then how is supply reduced then? Yeah, Handshake's kind of all about burning, actually. Um, so every, every time you buy a domain, uh, the money doesn't go to anyone. It just gets burned. So you're kind of paying back to the rest of the protocol participants that still hold Handshake. Um, so that's the, the main deflationary aspect is these auctions. So currently, like one about 1% 1 of the total Handshake supply has already been burned um, in order to buy these domains. And then a lot of, we're working on like other burn models for secondary applications built on top of Handshake. So um, there's this one DEX called Shake DEX where you can buy and sell domains in a decentralized manner. There's like no custody or anything. And they're looking at having you burn Handshake in order to list on their site. Um, and there's a lot of other applications for like actually burning Handshake. And yeah, so it's mostly a deflationary token. Um, there's a pretty limited uh, inflation rate from the miners. And we don't know when any, when or if any of these like airdrop tokens will ever be claimed and come into circulation. Oh, interesting. So 
instead of paying transaction fees to the system, the system doesn't make any money. It's just not for profit. And the system just burns these tokens that's used for any purchase within the system. Yeah, you still pay minor fees um, to mine your transactions. But as far as like actually buying the domain, um, that's that money gets burned. It doesn't go to anyone. So what is how does handshake work? What is this auction mechanism that is being used? So auction mechanism in the in the token economics framework, that's under mechanism design and that's under bargaining protocol. How do you bargain? How do you get price discovery of these domain names? As I mentioned, I I went to bid for economics design and my name to show you how to show you how it works. And the auction mechanism is very fun. It's this thing called the Vickery auction. So the Vickery auction is it's a very it's a very robust mechanism, a very robust auction mechanism where you are able to allocate the asset to the person who has the right who 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 has the highest value of the good. And so to give you an example, let's say I have I have a, I have a camera here. Okay? And how the auction works is that for the camera, I'm going to bid a thousand bucks and someone else bids 2000 bucks and who wins? Well, the person with the highest value. So the other person who bids 2000 bucks wins the auction, but how much do they pay? They pay the second highest, which is me, my bid, which is $1,000 and they pay $1,000. So I don't want to go into the math of it. If you're interested, let me know. I can, I can share a little bit more about how it works. But in general, because of this mechanism, you're always the person who bids will always bid the true value, and then we're allocating it efficiently to the right person who holds the highest value of the goods and paying at the second highest price. So that's the idea. So when you go to when you go to Namebase, which is the way to buy domain names from Handshake, when you go to Namebase, you you bid for these you bid for these domain names. You can have open bid and closed bid. You bid for it and it takes about five days for it's open and anyone can bid for it. And after that, the bid closes and people, the, the domain name is awarded to the person with the highest value, who values it the highest and pays the second highest price. So that's the bakery option. There are a lot of other decentralized DNS systems out there. So for example, there's Unstoppable Domains, there's Ethereum Name Service, and now there's Handshake. So what would you say is the difference between these three different protocols? Um, so they're all generally attacking different layers of the stack, I would say. So Handshake, we're only concerned about the root zone, which is basically, as I said, like more about this like political decentralization than anything. Um, there's a lot of like economic efficiencies and like security stuff as well. Um, ENS is much like lower on the stack. They're more about like managing your subdomains um, and like providing more utility to domain names in general. So technically they could do what Handshake did was like make their own root zone. Um, they're not doing that. They're right now using ICANN, um, ICANN's root zone, which is also the same as Handshake. I should mention that like Handshake's root zone is also ICANN's root zone. It just opens it up um, to be more accessible to other people. Um, and so ENS is more about like, yeah, like the subdomains, like everyone has their whatever .eth um, and they use that to send Ethereum to each other, tokens to each other. So ENS and Handshake are actually compatible. You, you can use them together. Uh, ENS just doesn't want to integrate Handshake because of a few reasons, um, which in my opinion are very valid. And then Unstoppable Domains is kind of probably like the most illegitimate domain project, I would say. Um, so the problem with Unstoppable Domains is that they like made their own, their own domain, like .crypto, but it's not attached to a root zone. Um, so it's not accessible from the internet at all. Like there's no DNS. Um, system to resolve dot crypto. And more importantly, like ICANN or Handshake, um, they could have their own dot cryptos, which would supersede anything on um, unstoppable domains. So it's kind of like an orphan that's just kind of like on its own over there doing its own thing, but it's not attached to anything. Um, so that's kind of an issue. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of the same thing for dot ETH actually, but dot ETH is like less of an issue. So some concluding thoughts and some, some opinions. Firstly, I think Handshake Protocol on its own is important because it's building a decentralized infrastructure. It's working together with the current certificate authorities out there and the current servers out there to find a way to match the current, the existing domain names out there and allowing 
anyone to create their own domain names. And I think that's a very important part in the underlying layer of this technological infrastructure or the internet infrastructure. Because Web 3.0 is all about decentralizing and distributing these benefits to anyone who wants, who, who wants to get access to the benefits. And so this is an important infrastructure to be building. The second thing is the burning mechanism is also interesting because as I mentioned, it's a way to transfer value because there are a lot of people creating value, especially in this open source ecosystem or sharing ecosystem, it's kind of hard to quantify the value. So if we have a token to represent that value and then you have the right kind of people paying and, and getting compensated for the value and turning that value into something tangible like domain names, then that's a very good way of structuring the mechanism, of structuring the value flow of the ecosystem. And lastly, there's a real use case for the HNS tokens. Bitcoin wanted to be a peer-to-peer -peer payment system, which is fine and completely, completely makes sense. It's kind of doing that, kind of not doing that right now because people are storing it instead of just transferring it. So their use case is quite limited. Whereas for handshake tokens or the handshake protocol, the real use case is owning the domain names. And you will want to buy the domain names now because they're a lot cheaper and there are a lot of, you can also buy domain names in emojis or in foreign languages. So there's a wide variety, a wide application and use case. So there will never be a, a missing use case for the, the handshake tokens because you can always buy new emoji domain names or new mixture of foreign languages and emoji in your domain names. So you can always be using your tokens in, in a way that allows the value to be regenerated back into the system. So the, the token is really a facilitator of value transfer within the ecosystem. And basically that is what, in general, tokens are. Tokens are a representation of value. So that's it for the handshake protocol. I hope that helps you, that gives you a clearer idea of what handshake is and why are we distributing domain name service or this DNS thing. I implore you to go and try it out. How do you use the handshake tokens? How does the, the auction bidding things work? It's very interesting. And you can buy them on namebase.io. You have to buy them with Bitcoin. Buy them with Bitcoin, get your handshake tokens, go to Namebase and either bid for new domain names or you can compete with others to be bidding for or buying off the domain names that, that already exist. Play around with foreign words, play around with emojis because you can, you can, you know, have them, you can keep them and you can own these domain names. So I think that's very cool. Till then, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.